Baseball is alive and well in Korea. The Korea Baseball Organization is shattering old attendance records as the largest crowds in the KBO's 43-year history fill up the stadiums for all 10 teams. If you think there must be one simple reason why fans in Korea are rushing out to the ballpark, well, it's not just one reason. There are so many things going right for Korean baseball in 2024. This has been a year to remember in the KBO. What are the reasons, and can they keep it going next season? That's what we're here to talk about today. For a lot of you out there, your first exposure to the KBO was in 2020, when professional baseball was shut down in most other parts of the world. That was when the KBO earned a large international following, and now more people outside of Korea are aware of the KBO than there ever were before. Different story domestically though, the KBO roared into the 2010s with increasing attendance to go along with the stadium boom, several new ballparks opening up around the country, but that all peaked in 2017 with a record of 8.4 million in total attendance. The numbers fell short in 2018, fell even further in 2019, so did the ratings. And though the league enjoyed worldwide attention from its new international fans in 2020, and to a lesser extent in the years that followed, polls taken during that time showed that Korea's number one sport, soccer, was really starting to distance itself from number two baseball. At the end of 2022, Korea's soccer team had a successful World Cup. At the start of 2023, Korea's baseball team had an unsuccessful World Baseball Classic which you'd naturally expect to widen the gap even more. So, there was a lot of concern in recent years about the direction of the KBO. But toss those concerns aside because the KBO is really showing some resilience in 2024. That 2017 attendance record of 8.4 million, it came tumbling down a couple weeks ago. Two weeks, so they've already cruised past that old record. And just like MLB and NPB, the KBO plays its regular season schedule all the way through September so they still got another month to completely demolish the old record. Total attendance currently sits at 8.7 million. Average attendance is 14,766 per game, third highest in the world behind NPB and MLB. If you're only familiar with MLB attendance figures, you might look at KBO attendance numbers and think, well, 14,000 per game? That's the same as an unpopular MLB team's attendance. In fact, right now, only the Oakland A's are below that number. But the U.S. has 29 teams and a population of over 330 million, one team for every 11 million residents. Korea has 10 teams and a country of 50 million, one for every 5 million residents, more than twice the number of teams per capita. Every team in the KBO is averaging over 10,000 per game. If it holds, it'll be the first time in KBO history that happens. Over 160 sellouts this year, already an all-time record. More than 6 million in attendance before the All-Star break. First time that's ever happened. They're averaging nearly 16,000 per game in August, which will be a record for the highest monthly average. Attendance up to this point is up more than 30% from last year. This record-breaking pace started right at the beginning of the season and never lost any steam. Now we gotta look at why. Part of the reason is the right teams are winning. The LG Twins are one of the most popular teams in the KBO. Last year they won the Korean series, ending a 29-year title drought. Just like we see in MLB with the Rangers and Diamondbacks, a trip to the championship series one year often results in a big attendance boost the following year, and LG Twins fans have responded, averaging around 18,600 fans per game, the highest in the KBO. The team has done all they can to maintain that interest too. They are in third place right now. The Kia Tigers are the first place team right now, and second in KBO attendance. Another very popular team in Korea, in fact the most popular team. The Tigers have not finished higher than 5th place since 2017. That was also the year of their last Korean series title, and the year of the last KBO attendance record. The Twins and Tigers are followed in attendance by three more of the KBO's most popular teams, the Doosan Bears, Lokde Giants, and Samsung Lions. Lions are in 2nd place, Bears are in 4th. Giants are 3rd from the bottom, but they always draw well anyway. The Kiwoom Heroes are last in attendance, following a last place finish in 2023, and are currently in last place in 2024. The Hanwha Eagles, a team that has finished in the bottom two each of the past five seasons, has achieved 94% seat occupancy. The reason they're not in the top five in KBO attendance is because their home ballpark only seats 13,000, the smallest in the KBO. They are moving into a larger stadium next year, which I covered in a video last week. That may be bringing out additional fans. One last summer to see the Eagles play at the old ballpark. It's also the KBO's oldest stadium, but that's not the main reason for their attendance surge. 
It helps that the Eagles are in seventh place right now, only four games under 500 and four games out of a playoff spot, the best they've looked in years, but that's not the main reason either. The biggest reason has got to be the return of Hyun Jin Ryu, a two-time Major League Cy Young finalist who decided to return to his old KBO ball club while he's still a Major League level pitcher. Even though he's been kind of average in his KBO return, Eagles fans have been absolutely thrilled to welcome back their old pitcher, a proven success in the world's top professional league, while their own ball club has endured three last place finishes in the last four years. Ryu isn't the only individual player drawing fans to the stands. Shin Su Chu, another major league legend from Korea, announced before the start of this season that he would retire. The 42-year-old outfielder is in his fourth KBO season with the SSG Landers, after 16 seasons in Major League Baseball. The 2024 season is everyone's last chance to see Chu in action. Shin Su Chu and Hyun Jin Ryu are the most successful Korean ballplayers in MLB history, and 2024 is the only season that KBO fans can see both of them on the field. You could argue that neither Ryu nor Chu is the greatest Korean baseball player of all time. That honor may very well go to Sung Yup Lee, a KBO legend with the Samsung Lions, and also was a success with the Yomiri Giants in NPB. He is in his second year as manager of the Doosan Bears, the team that's third in attendance at the moment. So whoever you think is the greatest Korean baseball player, Ryu, Chu, Lee, they all have a presence in the KBO this year. But the KBO is making history not just for the legendary names on the field. Like I said, Ryu has been average in his return. Chu has a 390 on base percentage, but nothing really exciting to see from him. Lee isn't even playing, just managing. But some players really are making history. At the start of this season, SSG Landers third baseman Jung Choi became the KBO's all-time home run king. And he's not some old guy being escorted out to the plate to break the record. He's got 32 home runs and a 989 OPS. Fans have had the chance to see Choi break the record and go on to utterly destroy it in 2024. That's not the only record that's fallen. NC Dino's outfielder Ah Sup Son broke the all-time hits record. He now has over 2,500 career hits. Kia Tigers pitcher Hyun Jong Young just recently broke the record for all-time strikeouts. The former Texas Rangers pitcher has struck out over 2,000 batters in the KBO. Imagine the all-time records for home runs, hits, and strikeouts all going down in the same year. The KBO may not be as old as MLB or NPB, but with a history of over 40 years, that's still a pretty big deal. And it's not just older players reaching milestones that's attracting attention. Do Young Kim of the Kia Tigers, again with this team, first in the standing, second in attendance. At 20 years old, Kim became the KBO's youngest member of the 30-30 club, only the ninth player ever to reach the 30-30 mark in the KBO, and the first since 2015. Right now, he has 32 home runs, 35 steals, batting 342, on base percentage 416, slugging 634, a 20-year-old having an MVP season while so many all-time records are falling to older players. As far as the competition, it's a lot more balanced this year. A much better race for the playoffs. Plenty of scoring, too. Unlike in neighboring Japan, offenses have been alive in Korea. Here are the scores from that wild July 31st, a record scoring day for the league. That's not typical, of course, but it shows you that the bats are alive and well there. And let's not forget the obvious. The first ever MLB opening series in Korea took place back in March at Gochuk Sky Dome in Seoul. Shohei Otani took his first swings as a Dodger in what might be an MVP season. But a bigger deal for Korean fans was the return of San Diego Padres infielder Ha Sung Kim, a reminder of what an important role Korea plays in the world of baseball. Kim's old team, the Kiwoom Heroes, played an exhibition game against the Dodgers. It would have been a good follow-up if the Heroes had gotten themselves out of last place, but whatever, they're still averaging over 10,000 fans per game. LG Twins and Team Korea also played exhibition games. And who exactly is coming out to the ballpark? According to an article from the Korea Times, the crowds are getting younger and more female. 38% of KBO spectators are in their 20s. 54% of tickets are purchased by women. We always hear about MLB crowds getting older. The KBO's got over a third of its crowd under 30. And it's really hard to imagine a majority female crowd. But if the article is right, that's what they've got. So what does this mean for the future? Well, if the crowd's getting younger, that's a really good sign. Though there is a population decline in Korea, fewer young people than past generations, still, a young audience is what you want. The Eagles will say goodbye to their little old park at the end of this season. 
Next year, they'll open a new ballpark with 7,000 more seats than the present one. Eagles fans will certainly be lining up to check out the new place. They've been at over 90% capacity this season. Don't know if and for how long they'll be able to maintain that in their new, larger stadium, but I'm sure next year's attendance will be much higher than 13,000, the capacity of their present stadium. Not only the Eagles, as I pointed out in last week's video, the Twins and Bears will also be moving into a new, larger venue a little further into the future, probably the early 2030s. And it was mentioned in the comments that a couple other teams, the SSG Landers and Lotte Giants, are also working on new stadiums. So the KBO is at the start of another stadium boom. One team next year, and four teams within the next decade, moving into new venues. Each new stadium opening bringing an additional boost to attendance. On the downside, they'll have a hard time matching this year's on-the-field action. No guarantee the teams will stay so competitive with each other. The records that were broken this year will be extended but won't fall again, probably not for a long time. Shin Tzu Chu will be retired. You only get one farewell tour. Ryu will still be there, but the novelty of his return will wear off a little. But overall, I'd have to say things look really good for the KBO. Already the top domestic professional sports league, and it's going to keep getting bigger. If you're outside of Korea and want to join in viewing the rest of this historic season, there will be a link in the description to a site where the games are streamed live. There's one more month in the KBO season, followed by the five-team playoffs and the Korean series. So sit back and enjoy. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!